A few weeks back, a state representative in Maine decided to call one of the Parkland shooting survivors, Emma Gonzalez. He called her a skinhead lesbian. And thankfully, he won't be a state representative for much longer because <laughs> due to the reaction of that, he's not running for re-election anymore. Then this week, we had Laura Ingram, we were just talking about this during the break, called David Hogg a whiner over not getting into a couple of colleges. I read his statement, he wasn't even whining about it. And even if he were, I think he's earned a little bit of whining if he wants. And in reaction to that, she's lost a significant number of her advertisers, including Johnson & Johnson, who I believe is the largest advertiser in the country. Awesome. So you'd think with those examples, people would back off a little bit. But no, members of the GOP just wants them some of that action. And so we're gonna turn to another one. This is in North Carolina, state representative, at least today. Uh, Beverly Boswell <laughs> had this to say about uh, the speakers uh, who are predominantly the students at the March for Our Lives. Uh, they're out to take your guns and our freedoms. Oh, that's fine, that's what they're all saying, that's not too bad. <laughs> uh, even though it's not true remotely. Um, actually, many of the speakers at these rallies were calling for gun registration, confiscation, second amendment repeal, and even the murder of those who would not turn over their guns to the government. Blaming guns for crime is as silly as blaming plastic bags for pollution. It's typical of liberals to blame crime on everyone but the criminal. First of all, I would say that if you pay attention to our oceans, plastic <laughs> pollution is kind yeah, of a big say. deal. But let's stick to the guns for now. They don't just want to confiscate your guns, they want to get rid of the second amendment. That was actually a former Supreme Court justice, that wasn't one of the speakers of the March for Our Lives. And they want to murder those who won't turn in their guns. Um, that seems to me like kind of an unfair version of what they said. We'll let you decide. We're gonna to turn to a little bit of a student, Cameron Kasky, one of the most outspoken of the Parkland students, talking about what they actually want to accomplish with their movement. The NRA says that what you guys wanna do is not just take away semi-automatic weapons, just take away high capacity weapons. You really wanna take away people's guns. Well. First of all, we are not just marching to end school violence. We are marching to end violence all over the country because that's where it happens. Second of all, we are not trying to take everybody's guns away. My father is a reserve police officer. We have guns in our house. They are responsibly managed and hidden from anyone but him. But the, the point is, we are not trying to take everybody's guns away. And the NRA wants people to think that. They're fear mongers. They want to sell weapons by exploiting people's fears. So the second we want to put common sense regulations on these assault weapons, the NRA will say they are trying to steal every single one of your guns. And people believe them. Fortunately, the majority of the American people see past this. Right? Yeah, we were just talking about how, <laughs> how good they are at articulating their message. Um, I uh, work at TYT, <laughs> so I will never be allowed on any of those networks. But if I were, I would be stumbling and bumbling. I wouldn't be able to do, like there was a, there was a student who at the march vomited in the middle of her speech, collected herself and then delivered that a speech better than anything I've ever done. No, I would have oh, done the would, vomit part, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not the before and after. But yeah. anyway, um, there, they, they explained very clearly what they're for. Uh, a little bit more, uh, the mission statement for the movement says that they're working towards universal comprehensive background checks, bringing the ATF into the 21st century with a digitized searchable database and advocating for funds for the CDC to research the gun violence epidemic in America, which thankfully was actually a part of the recent uh, spending bill. Uh, they've also called on Congress to enact a high capacity magazine ban and crack down on the sale of assault style weapons. We did not edit out the part where they called for the murder of <laughs> gun owners, it wasn't there in the first place. Yeah, that's just projection. I mean, let's be honest. Like, if you want to understand like the psychological phenomenon of projection, you really understand the entirety of the Republican Party, right? Mm -hmm. Like projections where you have something going on wrong inside your head, but you can't really deal with it. So you just like put put it on other people and then try and like beat it out of them, right? Mm -hmm. And so like now they're like, oh, these Parkland kids, who by the way, their friends at their school while they were in the school were shot dead. Mm -hmm. They're like the NRA people are like they want to kill people. It's like. No, they're actually terrified of being killed because they were in a school where a school shooting took place. They don't wanna kill anyone, they wanna stop people from being killed. But of course the Republicans and the conservatives and the NRA like gun worshiping nut jobs are like, they wanna kill people, you know why? Because those people wanna kill people. They think mm -hmm. violence is perfectly acceptable way to like solve political disputes. 
So of course they would think like, oh yeah, they want to murder us. Why? Because they want to murder us. The NRA people, the conservatives, like they're the kind of people that would actually kill yeah, people over you, politics. Have you seen NRA TV? I mean, God, mm -hmm. talk about a race war they're trying to foster. Oh, Jesus, they're wearing the shirt yeah. saying socialist tears, smashing television, showing Black Lives Matter protests. I mean, they are really fomenting so much fear against black people and against leftists, which I find extremely yeah. deranged and damaging, especially in the climate with the Trump administration. I mean, it's, it's really over the top. I, <clears throat> totally agree with Ryan about projection, but I think the reason that Donald Trump won the presidency, I mean, obviously there are a lot of reasons, is based on fear. Fear, 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 fear. It's the, <clears throat> the bottom rung of the Maslow's hierarchy of values. And that's what the Republicans and what the NRA are really good at. If you can get people to be fearful, they will follow an autocratic leader, and that's what Donald Trump is. And that's why they are so strongly holding on to him. But wait, that's half the story, right? Because like, yes, it is about fear from the Republicans and the conservatives, but it's also a complete lack of vision from the Democrats. And that's where I would actually take even like the Parkland kids to task, like being like, we don't wanna take your guns. Like, no, actually I do wanna take your guns. <laughs> like, if you're like if you're like a rapist or a child molester or a wife beater, like I wanna take your gun. Like, like you, don't, you don't get to have a gun well, they, anymore. They'd probably be okay with that. Yeah, and no, that's actually not a law. Right? Well, there so are a like, couple states that have recently passed laws to take away the guns yeah. of domestic abusers. Exactly, like but at I'm the sure federal level, that. let's do it. And yeah, just, it should be let, a part of it. And yeah. let the NRA argue, like, you know, oh no, we want child molesters to have mm -hmm. guns. That'd be great. Rob Porter right? should have a shotgun. Exactly. Why so wouldn't he? There's no nuance whatsoever. You hear one thing about gun control, and it's let's take your guns. I mean, it's yeah. just insanity. But follow me. Follow me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I want to saying. take your guns. If mm -hmm. you beat but your that's wife, not what these, I want. Oh, of course. Yeah. The and domestic like, violence and stuff. That's what, absolutely. And that's what I'm saying. They're like, we want a digitized ATF database. I don't want a digitized ATF database. I don't care. That should obviously be part of it. I don't want a bump stock ban. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Well, I think the database I, helps mm, you to track down I understand the people that. too. Take their I guns. That, this is my point I was making. You don't want a bump stock ban? No, I don't, because it's such a lack of vision. It's such a poverty of vision. It's not going to solve a problem, right? And that's why I Donald Trump it, won that election. I don't want it if that is all that we would then get. But that's if what we would do that, for. if we would do that, and then everyone would be like, "Oh, good, we won," then I agree. I don't want that. That's but literally where the debate that. is. That's where yeah. the debate is. It's like, oh, we want everybody to have. We want America to be a supermarket of assault weaponry for the world and everyone in America, or a bump stock ban. And that is why. People no, like I, Donald Trump and the Republicans keep we agree, winning. We agree. Because the I, Democrats aren't presenting a vision of what something would actually solve this problem. You want to solve this problem? Tax bullets at 100%. Mm -hmm. You want to solve this problem? Make sure everybody that owns a gun has to insure it. If you have to pay 100 bucks to have a gun every month, you're probably going to get rid of few I, of your guns. I, I think that, yeah, the Second Amendment thing, um, obviously the NRA does not give an ish about the Second Amendment, right? They are selling a propaganda campaign fomented on fear to basically sell weapons. That's what it comes down to, the bump stock thing, the assault ban. Exactly. I mean, all of these things are monumental money makers. They don't, they, anything taken off the market, the bump stock, all the stuff, it's going to lose massive amount of profits for them. What it comes down to is making money. They will do whatever they can on NRA TV, whatever they can to basically foment all the, the crazy hysterical Trump supporters to be gun toting morons who think that this is about taking away guns. But really, we are the world's leading empire. We are the world's leading arms dealers. So I think it's actually hypocritical to not talk about why is it okay for Trump to be selling hundreds of millions of dollars in weapons to Saudi Arabia, boasting about these charts in the Oval Office. Meanwhile, we should be blocking these arms deals. We should be blocking the fact that we're the world's leading arms deal because when it comes down to it, this is what creates this gun culture in America. I mean, it's mm -hmm. all connected. Right, the glorification what are you, what are you, of the military and absolutely. violence generally. What are you gonna do? You're gonna convince the gun manufacturers to stop selling guns? You're gonna convince the NRA gun worshipers to stop worshiping guns? You're not going to do that. Well, I think that you would you have be, to fight. You're not gonna get guns to be them. taken away. That's yes. definitely not gonna happen. Yes, actually, there was a national no. gun buyback in Australia. You're after talking they about had Australia like compared to America. I understand that, and I'm sure different. if you're we're, we're talking if you about ask people vision. at that time, yeah, you give me a vision. And I agree with that, but I think we have to pay attention to Justice Stevens, I'm a lawyer. I mean, he wrote the dissenting opinion in Heller. It was just 5-4. His argument mm -hmm. is really solid that the Second Amendment does not stand for what the NRA believes it stands for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's have, that, exactly. For exactly. Let's of have that conversation. Right. It's time for like gun ownership to be well regulated again. Mm -hmm. You know, like it says right. in the Constitution. Yeah. Well, what what I would hope is that one of the I think one of the reasons we have the laws that we have is there's a fundamental disconnect between people who like guns and people who want them to be regulated, where the people who want them to be regulated are far more numerous, but far less passionate. Like mm. support for background checks is at higher than anything else other than like belief in angels yeah. in America or something <laughs> like that. But the problem is that people aren't going out and actually voting based on that issue. And I'm hoping that in the same way that you've seen 
We talked about a poll earlier this week about how support for Medicare for all is now the majority position across the country. Mm-hmm. It's like 59%, and you're seeing more and more politicians being outspoken in support of it. I'm hoping that after the March for Our Lives, this series of town halls, and the fact that these kids are unlikely to go back, you know, they're not just gonna go on summer break and forget about this, that more and more politicians will feel emboldened to be bold in the way that you want on guns, and that more and more politicians on the other side will start to see that the little bit of money that they're gonna get from the NRA is not worth the votes that they'll lose if they're seen to be too easy on the NRA. The midterms are super simple if you care about the gun issue. If 90 plus percent who want increased background checks literally go out and register and vote for only candidates who will vote for that piece of legislation, Mm -hmm. Democrats take the House and the Senate and we are primed for 2020. Well, I would say before I mean, we even get to that. The math is so clear on that. I, I, I totally agree with that, but I would say that before we get to that general election, we've got another election cycle that we're in the middle of right now. And I wanna make sure that the people who end up going and hopefully winning in November are the best sort of candidates. We've got primaries that are taking place in a number yeah, of states right. still. I think that people should be going and asking those people about these particular topics. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be some sort of just general thing. Not or how topics. much money have they raised? <clears throat> Bills. Bills, Will yes, you legislation. vote for and co-sponsor HR blank, blank, blank yes. to get rid of assault weapons, to have more background checks? Yeah, yeah. choose That's the right people in the primaries now. Is all about. And then they'll win later on and this I, year, hopefully. I've worked on campaigns for nearly two decades now, and I can tell you the one place that politicians fear electoral opposition most is the primary. Mm-hmm. Cuz like 80 or 90% of them live in safe districts, right? Yeah. So that doesn't really matter. Up till now. It, it, yeah, if they get in the general election, like mm-hmm. they're going to win, you right? But that also means a lot of them don't know how to run a real election cuz they've never had to, right? Yeah, or have not in two decades. Right. right, exactly. So if you go into a primary with what a lot of the people, you know, who have been out there and worked on elections now for Obama or Bernie or Clinton or whoever, right? You go and you use that knowledge and you target them in primaries, you're gonna wipe the floor with them, yeah. right? And you can get yourself elected or your friends elected or somebody who actually do something about this problem. And that's what solves, I think, the problem I was talking about with Richard. The vision problem isn't a problem of the Republicans being horrible people. We know they're horrible people. We know they have horrible <laughs> ideas. That's been obvious right. for decades, or right, no or longer. Ideas. Right. What we need is people inside the Democratic Party who have a vision, mm-hmm. who have new have interesting ideas. I mean, what, right. what vision but do you want That's our job to have? that yeah. you should run to. You know, like <laughs> we need people inside the Democratic Party who have a vision, who can come up with innovative solutions that'll make people wanna vote. Cuz I don't even wanna go vote in November for background checks. It's not gonna solve the problem. When we did Wolfpack, what people kept saying to us is, the reason I joined Wolfpack and started helping out with this is because I looked at the plan that Jank articulated and I said, that could actually work. Mm-hmm. If we did that, it would actually solve the problem. And that's what we need on guns. We need something that'll actually solve the problem. You need to insure guns. You need to tax bullets, you need to have licenses Mm -hmm. with photo ID for gun ownership in America at the federal level. And if you tell that to people, then you say, this is the bill I'm gonna put forward, this is the law I'm gonna present. Then they will vote for you yeah. because that could actually solve the problem. Well, let's let's yeah. make sure and a bill like that is on the ballot for people to vote there for candidates go. for in 2018. The reason I'm focused on this is, do you know the percentage of 18 to 29 year olds that traditionally vote in in, in midterms? It's like Very 18%, low. 16 percent. 16 percent. Yeah. 16 percent. If we got that number up to 30 percent, and if they're motivated by whatever bill, background checks or or the Ryan Clayton bill, and let's make that happen, <laughs> then you get 30 percent instead of 16 percent. Seal clubbing gun owners. <laughs> <laughs> Literally districts that are red, that are solid red. If you get all those new young people to come out and vote, they're no longer red districts, and we win a huge percentage of them. We yeah. transform the United States of America if we go from 16% of young people to 30% of young people. Yeah. If you want to get the whole Young Turks show every single day, become a member tytnetwork.com/join. And once you do, you'll be saying, "You know, I'm like a smart person." Or you might say, "I think it's weird." Or you might say, oops. No, that won't be that one. It won't be that one. It'll be great, trust me. TYTnetwork.com slash join.